concerns, Mr. Speaker, the fact that we restricted the importation of pork from Brazil. Mr. Speaker, over the past week or two, concerns were expressed to the Ministry of Agriculture by the importers of pork from Brazil. The concern was that the restriction of pork importation from Brazil was not lifted despite the fact that the restriction on beef and poultry were lifted. The concern, Mr. Speaker, prompted a meeting, a meeting where representatives of the Chamber of Industry and Commerce were present, representatives of the Ministry of Trade present, Ministry of Agriculture, and a representative of the Cabinet. Mr. Speaker, as a result of that meeting, my ministry agreed to follow through urgently on obtaining a risk assessment on pork imported from Brazil from several competent authorities, including the USA authorities, AICA, FAO, and CADI, among others. Members of the chamber agreed to supply my ministry with specific suppliers in Santa, Ca Santa Catarina from which they have been and will continue to import pork so that the assessment could be targeted as a result less costly. It is important, Mr. Speaker, for me to explain why a risk assessment is requested, had been requested by the CBO at this time. A risk assessment sought by the CBO in 2009 had not been obtained. However, directives were issued to import pork from Brazil despite not having the certified risk assessment. That decision exposed our citizens and residents to the risk of spreading foot and mouth disease. And so, Mr. Speaker, because we were importing swine from Brazil and imports were being done from that time from Santa Catarina, it was determined that the producers in that city operated farms that were not affected. There is no evidence that any such disease has come to our shores from those imports. Let me make that statement clear. There is no evidence that any such disease has come to our shores from those imports. In May 2015, Mr. Speaker, I need to make this point, however, our federation recorded its first CAFA confirmed hand, foot, and mouth disease. I hasten also to add that that was one incident because we've had no outbreaks. That incident was confirmed following the outbreak in Jamaica. And we concluded that that incident was linked to the outbreak in Jamaica. You see, Mr. Speaker, foot and mouth disease has the potential to be devastating to small women in populations. It is a severe, highly communicable viral disease of cattle and swine. It also affects sheep and goats and any other cloven foot hoofed animals. If found among your animals, the effect could be and will be severe reduction in fertility, among other things. That is the risk, Mr. Speaker, of foot and mouth disease in your population, in your small women and population. So when, Mr. Speaker, the Chief Veterinary Officer made the recommendation not to lift the ban on pork imported from Brazil, when she made the decision to rely on the results of a risk assessment before she makes any further recommendations on the importation of pork from Brazil, she, Mr. Speaker, is correctly relying on the science to avoid exposing our farmers to the risk of foot and mouth disease. It was only a few years ago that our bovine population suffered near total wipeout by the effects of the tropical bon tick. After years and years of betical use, this tick is still with us, causing havoc. I visited, Mr. Speaker, the humble farm owned by Lewis and Johnson and the stories of hundreds of thousands of dollars of losses from the tropical bontic made my heart sink. They had thousands of animals and they were whittled down to just a few. 
Now, Mr. Speaker, they are thriving again. And I want to congratulate them. They're working very hard. I see that farm down there, and we have some robust bulls down there, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> That's true. Very robust bulls. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, before going further, let me say that every effort is being made to obtain a risk assessment on pork imported from Brazil in a timely manner. Now, I will go further for the benefit of the public. Earlier this year, we learned that public officials in Brazil took bribes and allowed unwholesome cattle and poultry products to be exported from Brazil. That happened earlier this year. And according to the SDA MAPA report, those are authorities in Brazil, Brazil's declaration to the world came two years after the initial report by the Federal Fiscal Auditor. So two years after it was identified is when the world learned about it, the export of unwholesome products from Brazil. The fact that public health officials took bribes from companies in exchange for certificates of wholesome meat, unwholesome meat, not only undermined the confidence of the GAP and the HACCP systems, but also the general integrity of the export, export certification process for animals and animals' products. Now, our response as an independent state was similar to many nation states that imported animal products from Brazil. The government made the decision in March and was approved when a press release was issued by the Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Hazel Laws. In that release, Mr. Speaker, issued on March 23rd, she, the, the release stated that the National Agriculture Health and Food Safety Advisory Committee, there's a committee comprising of the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Agriculture, the Department of Consumer Affairs, the Bureau of Standards, Customs and Excise. That committee convened an urgent meeting on Thursday, March 23rd, and arrived at a consensus on the following two recommendations. They made two recommendations. One, to impose a temporary ban on the importation of all animal and animal products from Brazil. All. And secondly, Mr. Speaker, to remove, withdraw from the shelves all corned beef imported from and originating in Brazil. Two important conclusions. A press release issued by the Chief Medical Officer. And so, Mr. Speaker, on the 1st of May, a few months after, the Chief Medical Officer issued another press release, lifting the ban on beef only. Mr. Speaker, issued on the 1st of May, Again, quoting the, 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 the same committee, the HAH, the National Agricultural Health and Food Safety Committee. It is therefore making the following recommendations to lift the temporary ban imposed on March 24th on imported Brazilian corned beef with immediate effect. The only thing lifted in this relief, Mr. Speaker, was the beef there were still concerns to be checked out with poultry and pork. So the Chief Veterinary Officer, Mr. Speaker, who is the competent authority to provide advice on safety of meat products entering the Federation, has advised the committee that there is no further need to continue the restriction on poultry, since there are no known diseases affecting the poultry farms in Brazil. However, she has advised that the situation on pork is different. Brazil has some animal diseases, example foot and mouth disease and classical swine fever. They have high economic and socio impacts on animal production systems and along with the increasing prevalence of foodborne diseases globally, a risk assessment on the importation of frozen meat from Brazil would be necessary to prevent and introduce the animal diseases of concern. 
The estimated annual global impact of foot and mouth disease in terms of production losses and vaccination alone are in the region of 5 billion US dollars. This is reported by OIE, FAO, and RBC. Also in developing countries, the economic impact of CSCSF, which is the classical swine flu, has consequences for livelihoods in family production systems. Rough estimates for Latin America indicate that between 1997 and 2001, losses due to pig mortality were approximately US $30 million in Mexico alone. In Chile, between 1983 and 1997, direct losses to morbidity and mortality were estimated at 2.5 million US. That is a report which was published by FAO in 2003. The diseases identified can survive in partially cooked meat, frozen meat, and bone marrow long enough to be imported into the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. Now, Santa Catarina is borders by, by provinces that are free from foot and mouth disease with vaccination. They are free with vaccination. However, there's no guarantee that foot and mouth disease does not exist in those bordering provinces because the vaccination will not prevent exposure of the disease if it is present. It will only prevent clinical infection of susceptible animals. Therefore, there is a risk that FMD and CSF can be exported to us if the checks and balances are compromised. The fundamental reason why this chief veterinary officer is saying, look, let us have an assessment. Swill feeding plays a major role in the introduction of foot and mouth disease. I will skip that part, Mr. Speaker. The CBO has therefore recommended <laughs> that a risk assessment be done on specific farms in Santa Catarina in Brazil from which the importers of pork purchase their, their pork. Once those farms have been identified by the importers, a request for the assessment will be expedited. It will be sent not only to the US, but to AICA, CARDI, and FAO, and any other competent authority. A satisfactory risk assessment will enable importers to resume their trade with those farmers and plants in Brazil. Meanwhile, the ministry notes that as a result of the restriction, some persons have resorted to import pork from St. Martin. However, such persons are advised that no license will be issued to import such pork if they originate in Brazil. I underscore the point that the restriction is only in relation to pork from Brazil and may be only temporary as a favorable result, a favorable result of the risk assessment would facilitate importation once again. Stay up to date with news, programs, and activities of the government with SKNIS. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on SoundCloud. Follow us on Twitter. And watch our videos on YouTube. Connect with us today. SKNIS. St. Kitts and Nevis.